Good night, dear listeners. Welcome to another episode of Sleepy Voyages. The moon, in all its luminescent glory, bathes the waters below with a silver shimmer. Each ripple, each wave, speaks of tales untold and journeys yet to be taken. Among these tales, the adventures of brave Odysseus stand as a beacon for many a lost soul. Odysseus, whose name echoes across time, was a hero not just for his valor in the Trojan War, but for the trials he faced on his voyage home. His journey back to Ithaca was not a straight sail across calm seas, but rather a winding path through treacherous waters and encounters with beings of myths and legends. This path, filled with challenges, both external and internal, mirrored the intricate maze of human life and the battles of the soul. Each island he touched, every creature he met, represented not just an external foe, but a reflection of his own inner struggles. For many nights, Odysseus and his crew sailed under the watchful eyes of the gods, sometimes aided, at other times hindered, yet always striving forward. His story serves as a reminder that our personal odysseys, no matter how daunting, can be navigated with perseverance, wisdom, and a touch of divine intervention. Before we tuck you in tonight, Voyages of the Night Sky, we have a small but crucial request. As your eyelids grow heavy and the soothing tones of sleepy voyages guide you to the realm of dreams, remember the peace, serenity, and comfort that we bring to you every night just as a lighthouse guides lost ships. In the darkness, your reviews help other restless dreamers find their way to us. By leaving a review and sharing your thoughts on your experience, you are reaching out to other insomniacs lost in the night guiding them towards restful sleep. Take a moment before you drift away to click on the leave a review button on your podcast app. Help us extend our galaxy of tranquility to all those who seek the solace of sound sleep and once you've done that, feel free to slip back under the covers of our sleep stories, ready to be whisked away on another sleepy voyage. Remember, your stars light the way for others. Every review, every rating helps us create a bigger, more beautiful universe of peace and rest. And now, as the gentle waves lap against our ship of dreams, we find ourselves on the cusp of another chapter of his tale, one filled with songs that have the power to both enthrall and endanger, prepare voyagers to once again be swept into the world of the ancient Greeks, where myths come alive 
and lessons are etched in every whisper of the wind and every surge of the sea amidst the gentle rustling of the age. Old trees, Circe's island stood as an enigma in the vast expanse of the ocean, its shores bathed in the silver glow of twilight, bore footprints of countless beings that had once graced the place deep within the heart of the island, hidden from the gaze of any casual visitor, was Circe's abode. The air was thick with the scent of mystical herbs, each with tales of its own, burnished golden. The interiors gleamed softly, shadows dancing as the flames from the hearth played their eternal game. It was here in this haven, that's with her enchanting voice, murmured warnings of the perils that lay ahead for Odysseus, with eyes that seemed to hold centuries of knowledge. She spoke of the sirens, their voices carrying with them, a magic older than time itself, their song she said, was not just a melody, but a potion casting a spell so powerful it could halt time and cloud judgment. Those who fell for it never saw home. Again, their ships becoming mere relics on the siren's desolate isle. Circe's words weren't just of doom, they were interwoven with wisdom and guidance, a ball to sail past the sirens unharmed. One must not hear their song, yet she knew Odysseus, curious as ever, would want to hear it, and thus she presented a plan. It was simple but would demand trust, courage, and an unwavering focus. As the night deepened and stars claimed the sky, Circe's tales and counsel found a place in Odysseus's heart, preparing him for the challenges of the morrow. The sea stretched infinitely, its waves shimmering beneath the Grecian sun. Odysseus, a man whose very name became synonymous with epic voyages, stood tall and resolute upon the deck of his ship. After hearing Sir Circe's ominous warning, he had always been a beacon for his men leading them through perilous adventures and treacherous seas. But the sirens posed the different challenge, one that tested not just physical might, but also the strength of one's will. He gathered his crew, their faces marked with the salt of the sea, and the weight of their shared experiences. With seriousness in his voice, he relayed Circe's counsel. Beeswax, a seemingly simple substance, became their shield against the impending bewitchment. He watched with a leader's pride as each sailor sealed their ears, their trust in him evident, yet Odysseus's own heart wrestled with a burning curiosity. The sirens, with their fabled song, promised knowledge and truths that few 
to protect his crew while seating his own thirst for experience, he made a unique decision. He commanded his men to tie him securely to the ship's mast, ensuring he could hear the sirens without acting upon their seductive calls. It was a symbolic act showcasing the lengths a leader would go to protect his crew and satisfy his own human curiosities. In that moment, the ship became more than a vessel. It was a stage where human resilience and vulnerability intertwined. The horizon held a mystery, an island barren, but possessing an eerie allure. The sirens, creatures of old, awaited with a song, crafted from the dreams and desires of countless sailors who had ventured too close, Odysseus, bound tightly to the ship's mast, held a breath of anticipation. The first haunting notes of the siren's melody wafted across the open waters, a tantalizing blend of hope, memories and promises of untold wisdom. Each note seemed to pluck at the very heartstrings of Odysseus, drawing him in, even as the sturdy ropes kept him tethered to reality. The song was no mere tune. To the crew, their ears seal with beeswax. There was silence, save for the rhythmic slap of the oars against the sea. Yet, to Odysseus, every verse, every chorus was a testament to his courage and curiosity. It was the ultimate test of will, a balancing act between indulgence and restraint. But as the ship sailed on, driven by the steadfast determination of his crew, the distance between them and the sirens began to grow. The intoxicating melody started to wane, yet its echo, that lingering touch of temptation and wonder, would forever remain in the heart of Odysseus. A reminder of the delicate line between curiosity and self-preservation, the vast expanse of the sea surrounded Odysseus and his crew. The island of the Sirens, though now distant, had made a profound impact, lingering in the air like a haunting melody. For a moment, the entire world had been reduced to that intoxicating song, a symphony of promises, dreams, and longing. The ethereal voices had promised knowledge. Odysseus, tied to the mast, had felt the full force of their call. His heart, usually so steadfast, had wavered, yearning to join the sirens and embrace the depths of their mysteries. Every fiber of his being had strained against the ropes, seeking the source of that celestial music. But as the ship sailed farther from the island, the song's grip began to weaken. The hypnotic melody that had promised so much was replaced by the familiar sound of oars slicing through the water and the gentle lapping of waves against the ship's hull. 
A profound silence settled over the crew. It was a silence of relief, of survival, and of understanding the danger they had narrowly avoided. Odysseus, though still processing the allure he had experienced, felt a newfound appreciation for the journey and the hurdles they had overcome. The siren song, while beautiful, had been a trap, a detour from his path home. By resisting its pull, Odysseus and his crew had not only continued their journey but had grown stronger from the experience. It was a lesson in the power of resilience, the importance of staying true to one's path, and the understanding that not all that glitters is gold, and as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden hue over the waters, the ship sailed onward with its crew united in purpose and determination. The world of ancient Greece was a labyrinth of myths, gods and monsters, and Circe. The Enchantress was privy to its secrets. Among the moss-covered stones of her secluded island, and beneath the shadows of looming trees, she had imparted knowledge of two imminent dangers to Odysseus. While the memory of the sirens was Circe's voice, had once again turned grave, warning of threats far more tangible. On one side, Scylla lurked, a creature with twelve long dangling legs and six heads, each with a grisly neck and three rows of thick-set teeth, tightly packed together. Hungry and relentless, Scylla's hunger was legend, and her keen eyes scanned the waters below, forever in search of her next prey. On the opposing side, Charybdis waited, a monster who thrice a day drew water from the sea to create a deadly whirlpool, only to spew it back out with vehement force. To merely hear of such monstrosities might freeze the heart of many, but to be faced with navigating between them, that was a perilous task even for the seasoned voyager, with her gaze deep and unwavering, had made it clear, for while one might, might snatch a few men, with Circe's counsel still echoing in his ears, Odysseus would soon need to make a decision that would determine the fate of his crew and his voyage home. The ancient sea was not just a vast expanse of blue, but a realm of mysteries, dangers, and choices. Odysseus, already tried by numerous adventures, faced yet another perilous decision on his journey home. Unlike Scylla, Charybdis was not driven by hunger but by rhythm, thrice a day, she would swallow the sea's waters, creating a maelstrom that threatened to pull ships into her watery abyss. And thrice a day, she spat the waters out, causing turbulent whirlpools that made navigation near her a near impossible task. Sail too close to Scylla, and you'd surely lose men to her insatiable hunger. 
steer too near Charybdis, and the entire ship could be lost to the depths. The choice between the two was not just a matter of navigation, but a dilemma of sacrifice and strategy. Would it be wiser to risk a few men to Scylla's heads, ensuring a majority of the crew's safety, or gamble with the entire ship's fate, attempting to sail past the powerful pull of Charybdis? This was the choice that stood before Odysseus, a decision that would test not just his leadership, but his understanding of sacrifice, responsibility, and the unpredictable nature of the seas. The whisper of the waters seemed to hum with anticipation, awaiting the choice of the seasoned mariner. And as the ship sailed forward, the weight of the decision pressed heavily upon Odysseus's shoulders a testament to the trials of leadership and the responsibility of choices. The seas, in all their vastness, were not just about confronting external monsters, but also about navigating the internal mazes of the human heart and mind. The gentle lapping of the sea against the ship's hull was the only sound that could be discerned. Each member of the crew cast nervous glances toward the horizon, sensing the impending danger. Odysseus stood at the helm, his determined eyes fixed forward, but a shadow of doubt clouding them, whispers of Circe's warnings fluttered among the crew, each man wondering what monstrous challenge lay ahead. The wind seemed to carry with it an ominous chill, as if nature itself was cautioning them of the choices they'd soon face. The sails flapped uneasily, reflecting the crew's shared apprehension. Even the bravest among them tightened their grip on their oars, their knuckles white. It wasn't just the fear of the unknown, for the dilemma they were approaching was not just about navigating treacherous waters, but about choosing which danger to face head. Every heartbeat echoed the same question. Each stroke of the oar felt heavier than the last. As the ship moved closer to the crossroads of its fate, the sea, vast and mysterious, seemed to hold its breath, awaiting the choice of the Ithacan hero. The weight of leadership bore heavily on Odysseus' shoulders. To choose Scylla would mean inevitable loss. Six men, six voices, six souls would be taken. A price exacted by the monster. On the other hand, Charybdis offered no such certainty, but to Odysseus, a seasoned warrior and leader, it was about strategy and sacrifice. What weighed on him most was not the danger of the monsters, but the responsibility of choosing which danger to face. He reflected on past journeys, past battles, searching for wisdom in moments of quiet reflection. 
he would often think Ithaca, his home, and the faces of those he left behind. The memories offered solace, but also a reminder of the weight of his decisions. His mind wandered to his men, the loyal crew who had been with him through every trial, each face a testament to trust, to brotherhood. For them, he needed clarity. He recognized that, in leadership, there were moments where hard choices had to be made, where loss was inevitable. Yet, in that knowledge, there was power. The power to make informed decisions, to navigate challenges, and to protect as many as possible. Odysseus knew he would face criticism and heartbreak, for in this internal struggle, he would find the path forward, illuminated by the love for his crew and the unwavering desire to lead them safely home. In the dim light of dawn, the ancient waters of the Mediterranean whispered secrets of ages past. The ship, driven by the rhythmic rowing of the crew, moved steadily, casting ripples that shimmered in the first light. Odysseus concluded that facing Scylla would be a controlled loss. Charybdis, the monstrous whirlpool, posed a threat that could swallow the entire ship, leaving no survivors. The decision was clear, albeit painful. Odysseus summoned his men, not revealing the entirety of the threat, but urging them to row with all their might and trust in his judgment, his eyes darting constantly to the looming cliff, searched for any sign of the dreaded creature. Little did he know, Scylla was already watching, waiting for the opportune moment. As they neared, the silent tension aboard the ship was palpable. Every man aware that danger lurked, yet not fully grasping its magnitude. This choice, born from a place of strategy rather than desire, was one of the hardest Odysseus had ever made. For in leadership sometimes, the weight of sacrifice falls heavily upon the shoulders. His ship sailed closer to the towering cliffs, where shadows danced and whispered tales of a monster that lurked within. The waves lapped softly against the wooden hull, each one seemingly echoing Circe's warnings about the dreaded Scylla. The crew's eyes darted anxiously, scanning the looming cliffside for any sign of the beast, their hands gripping their oars more tightly. Odysseus stood at the helm, a silent pillar of strength, his gaze unyielding as he steered them towards their chosen path. Despite the calmness of the sea, the air was thick with suspense, as if nature itself held its breath awaiting Scylla's appearance. Then a chilling sound, a low growl, echoed from the caves, sending shivers down the spine of even the bravest sailor. Without warning, tentacles, swift and deadly, 
reached out from the watery shadows. Each limb was a weapon, a testament to nature's cruel design. And they hungrily sought their prey. The ship rocked violently in mere moments. Six valiant souls were snatched from the ship, their cries fading as they were pulled into the abyss of Scylla's lair. The rest of the crew, struck by horror and grief, pushed onwards, their rowing frenzied and desperate. Odysseus, while mourning the loss of his comrades, had to remain resolute, guiding his remaining crew away from the jaws of certain death. It was a testament to the unpredictability of life's journey, where choices could lead to sacrifices and bravery often walked hand in hand with loss. The ancient seas held mysteries that could chill the boats of even the most seasoned sailors. Odysseus and his crew, though wary, continued their journey, eyes scanning the foreboding cliffs looming. It was then that the silence was broken by a ripple, a shadow, a subtle change in the atmosphere that seemed almost intangible. For Scylla was not just any monster. She was a creature born of nightmares, possessing six long necks each ending in a savage head, each head with a hunger for human flesh. The crew's murmurs of unease grew louder, their rowing more frantic. Yet fate had already cast its die like lightning. Scylla struck, her necks darting down and snatching up six men, their screams echoing in the ears of their horrified comrades. Each sailor was powerless, watching in horror as their brothers in arms were consumed, the ocean's surface returning to its deceptive calm almost immediately. It was a loss that would weigh heavily on Odysseus, a reminder of the unpredictable nature of their journey and the sacrifices that come with leadership. Such moments, although devastating, teach resilience and the importance of moving forward despite the pain. For every challenge met, even those that result in loss. There is wisdom to be gleaned and strength to be harvested. The waves settled for a brief moment, a deceptive calm after Scylla's assault. Each man aboard took a deep breath, hearts pounding. Yet the next challenge lay just ahead, waiting. Silent, but no less deadly, whispers began to spread among the crew. Those who had heard tales of Charybdis, the fearsome whirlpool. It was said that she would swallow whole ships, pulling them into her watery depths, never to emerge. The older sailors traded stories, eyes wide, of vessels disappearing without a trace, lost to Charybdis's voracious appetite. And while Scylla had been a visible, tangible threat,
was an unpredictable force of nature. The crew's brief relief transformed into a shared realization. The journey was far from over. They tightened their grips on oars and readied themselves for what lay ahead. The unyielding pull of the monstrous maelstrom. Some prayed, others whispered affirmations, while a few merely closed their eyes, preparing mentally for the approaching peril. Each man knew the stories, the tales of ships that ventured too close and were sucked into a watery grave, but they also had faith in their leader, Odysseus, who had guided them through so many perils before. The unity of purpose, the shared determination, and as the waters began to churn and froth, signaling Charybdis's near presence, the crew steeled themselves for the next challenge, hoping to emerge unscathed once again. Upon reaching the domain of Charybdis's, the vast expanse of the sea transformed. Beneath them, the waters churned with an unimaginable force, a colossal whirlpool spiral, its powerful currents threatening to draw everything into its deep, abyssal core. The once confident waves now seemed to bow to this dominating force, spiraling and contorting as they were sucked into the maelstrom. Its sound was not of crashing waves, but a mournful, slow drag as it attempted to pull the very essence of the ocean into its depths. The ship, stalwart and sturdy, groaned under the force. Every timber and sail strained, fighting the inexorable pull. Odysseus, ever the tactician, quickly commanded his crew their rowing becoming the heartbeat that might just propel them out of this danger. Each oar entered the water with precision, their strokes synchronized as they sought to start to skirt the edge without becoming its prey. For many on board, their minds raced back to Circe's warning a reminder of the perils they were navigating. Fear gripped some, but it was met with the determination not to be claimed by the seas more. With every meter they covered, the ship edged away from the whirlpool center, its pull waning but ever present. In the midst of this ordeal, a profound respect for nature's power, mixed with the pride in human resilience, emerged among the crew. The vastness of the ocean, the unpredictability of their journey, emphasized how often one has to face seemingly insurmountable challenges, only to emerge stronger on the other side, and just as suddenly as the threat had appeared, they found themselves moving away from Charybdis, the ocean regaining its familiar rhythm, leaving behind a crew that had faced and evaded nature's fury. The ancient tales depict Charybdis as a powerful sea monster, her might lying in her ability to create whirlpools, drawing everything 
From the mightiest ships to the bravest of warriors, for a moment, as the crew glanced over the ship's edge, they saw the water churning, spiraling into a vast and violent vortex. The sight was one of dread, the ocean converging into a funnel of doom. Charybdis would swallow the water thrice a day, and then, in a powerful exhalation, release it back, creating torrents that few could navigate. Odysseus, with hands gripped tight on the ship's helm, the sailors, with eyes wide and muscles taut, rode with a fervor, battling the immense pull of the whirlpool. Their oars sliced through the frothing waves, trying to find purchase in the tumultuous sea, while Charybdis was a threat from below. The skies above seemed to mock the crew, with dark clouds roiling, yet offering no rain to quench their parched throats or calm their fevered brows. But then, as fate would have it. A wind. Harnessing this fortuitous gust, the crew adjusted their sails, catching the wind in their favor. With combined might, the strength of the men and the push from the wind, the ship began to inch away from the whirlpool's grasp. Every distance gained from Charybdis felt like a significant victory. Each moment they weren't sucked into the abyss was a testament to their resilience and unity. Finally, as the ship moved into safer waters, the crew could hear the distant roar of the whirlpool a sound now, not of impending doom, but of a challenge conquered. Such was the tale of their escape, a dance with death, a narrow evasion from the jaws of Charybdis, but also a monumental display of human spirit, determination, and the unpredictability of fate. For in life, as in the journey of Odysseus, we too face whirlpools of challenges, but with will and unity, we can steer clear, finding our way to safer shores. Imagine a golden thread weaving through the crown of your head, pulling ever so gently upwards. Your forehead relaxes, allowing any lines of worry to melt away. The space between your brows widens, letting go of all concentration and tension. Feel this warmth and softness travel down to your eyelids, which become heavy and relaxed. Your cheeks soften, your jaw unhinges, and the weight of your neck releases, allowing your head to feel light and free. This gentle cascade of relaxation trickles down to your shoulders, which drop ever so slightly, shedding any burdens they carry. Your arms feel serene, like gentle branches of willow trees swaying by a placid lake.
the golden thread weaves its way to your chest, letting your breathing become more unhurried, more profound. With every exhale, your heart space expands, sending ripples of calmness to every corner of your being. Your spine, strong and resilient, aligns, allowing every vertebrae to find its space and comfort. Your belly rises and falls in a serene rhythm, harmonizing with the gentle waves of an ocean at dusk. Your hips ground you, connecting you to the earth and the age. Your thighs, calves, and shins release their duties, allowing gravity to pull away all tiredness. Finally, imagine your feet, the keepers of journeys, sinking into soft white sand, feeling cool, relaxed, in the annals of time, few tales stand as stark reminders of our inner battles as that of Odysseus. Circe's whispered warnings, not just of monsters outside, but the monsters within, echo through time, much like Odysseus. Every one of us hears songs that beckon, promising dreams, but also possible doom, being tied to the mast. It wasn't just about hearing the sirens, but understanding the boundaries we set for ourselves. In facing Scylla, in choosing a known danger over an uncertain one, there's a reflection of our own choices, the tough decisions we make when navigating the uncertainties of life, evading Charybdis with its more of chaos. Mirrors those moments when we steer clear from overwhelming situations, recognizing that whirlpools that could pull us down in the vast ocean of life. These tales are not just stories of a brave man, but maps for every soul that sails, seeking home. Remember, as we sail our personal seas, we possess the strength of Odysseus, the wisdom of and the resilience of the crew, each wave, each challenge, is but a chapter. And like Odysseus, we too shall find our Ithaca. Rest in this knowledge, knowing that every dawn brings a promise of new horizons and that the stars will always guide you home. The tale of Odysseus and the Sirens has forever been etched in the annals of myth and legend, a story of temptation, of curiosity, and of resilience. Each of us in our lives hears our own version of the Siren's song it may be the call of procrastination when faced with a challenge or the lure of shortcuts. When the path seems long, 
just as Odysseus chose to listen, but not succumb. We too can recognize our temptations without falling prey to them. The beeswax in the ears of his crew symbolizes the barriers we set up to shield ourselves from harmful distractions. Yet, the choice of Odysseus to be tied up speaks volumes about it. It's a testament to our innate desire to experience life fully, even if it means facing the potential dangers head on his decision wasn't one of recklessness, but of controlled curiosity. It's a lesson of knowing when to protect oneself and when to embrace the unknown. The crew's unwavering trust in their leader and their determined rowing, even when oblivious to the siren's call, highlights the power of collective effort and trust. We may not have literal sirens in our world, but life continuously presents us with tests of our will and character by drawing wisdom from tales such as these. We equip ourselves to navigate our life's journey better, to recognize the sirens in our path, listen to their song, appreciate its beauty, but then row past with determination and purpose. For in the end, it's not about the temptations we face, but how we choose to respond to them. And just like Odysseus, with self-awareness and trust in our inner compass, we too can sail past our challenges, growing stronger with each encounter. While today's voyage has come to a serene pause, it is far from its conclusion. Odysseus, the warrior, the thinker, the wanderer, still has miles to travel and stories to tell. With every twist and turn, every monster faced, and every trial overcome, there lie hidden lessons waiting to be unearthed. While sleep beckons now, and dreamscape awaits, remember that with a new dawn, a new chapter in this epic will unfold. For in the chronicles of Odysseus, the voyage is both outward and inward, revealing not just the mysteries of far-off lands, but also the depth of the human spirit. And just as Odysseus remains undeterred, always striving for home, always seeking knowledge, we too must persevere, learning and growing from each story, each challenge, each song. But for now, let the gentle waves of sleep guide you to rest, with the promise that when you return, the journey will continue and the horizons will expand. Each adventure on the open seas brings its own lessons. Odysseus, with his unwavering determination, teaches us about the strength of human spirit and the will to overcome in the face of haunting melodies and monsters. He chose resilience and strategy over succumbing to temptation. 
or fear in our own lives we are met with the songs of temptation but remember just as Odysseus navigated through the dangers of the seas so can we steer our ship through the challenges we face whether it's the allure of the sirens or the threat of Scylla and Charybdis our choices shape our journey trust in your own wisdom seek guidance when needed and always always move forward even the darkest nights at sea give way to the light of dawn until the next tale unfolds. Find solace in the nights, embrace and let the stars guide your dreams. Good night, dear Voyager. See you in the next episode.